and the individual slot of just before lunch. So I will go quicker and faster than Chauncey so that I know your stomachs are rumbling. Um, I'm Lee, I'm the environmental lead for Wildra Taranaki, and this is Esther, and she is our Restore Communities Coordinator. So I'm just going to give you a bit of a brief overview of Wildra Taranaki and our regional aspiration to restore Taranaki and how you can get involved in what it's all about. Lee, could you stand a bit closer, please, because I'm trying to capture you and your slides. Thank you. Um, so, while for Tatanaki, who has been mentioned this morning, is an umbrella or the mothership of all the groups and organisations in Tatanaki doing environmental work. So, about a decade ago, they started to getting together on a regular basis because they wanted to share information and ideas and work together and grow the groundswell of what was happening in Tatanaki. So now there are over 40 member groups and organisations, and they're really the driving force alongside the Taranaki community, the landowners who are also delivering on the ground action. So the vision for Restore Taranaki is that by 2050, Taranaki will be restored. So there are four key goals in Restore Taranaki. So one is about engaging our community to take action, to uh, change the way they live, uh, where they work, where they play, so their actions can support the protection and the recovery of biodiversity. It's to restore the sound and movement of our Taranaki wildlife, so there are more insects and birds where we, where we live. To restore the cloak of Taranaki, so we're all really aware that Taranaki used to have a beautiful cloak around him, and now a lot of that has been removed. So one of the goals is to restore the cloak of Monga, and to restore the fresh water of Taranaki. So groups like Te Whenua Tumuru Trust are working really hard to monitor and restore our fresh water alongside organisations like the Regional Council. So we're really conscious that fresh water is a big issue in Taranaki and there are also national plans coming out alongside that. So that's one of our goals as well. So how can you be involved? There's so many different ways you can get involved and restore Taranaki. I would suggest you like our Facebook page if you're into Facebook. That's where a lot of the information and events and action and opportunities are advertised. You can attend an event. So the members uh, often work collaboratively on events and there's an event happening across Taranaki virtually every week. So one that's coming up is for World Wetlands Day on the 2nd of February and we're in discussion about a guided walk around Lake Mangamahoe along with um, speakers and lunch. So you can join the Predator Free Movement that Chauncey is leading and I noticed Toby who also manages that program is in the audience today so I'm sure they're, they're keen for your questions at lunchtime. Uh, you can plant native trees and Sean is going to give a quick <laughs> five minute overview of that after Esther and I are finished. And I just want to draw your attention to the booklets that are pictured there. Um, Wild for Taranaki has published a series of restoration planting guides and they outline um, what species to plant, where and in what order in Taranaki. So Taranaki is broken up into five pieces like a jigsaw and the plants in each of those five pieces are like a community, they're like a family. And so it does matter what you plant, where and when. So those booklets are available online and they're also available in hard copy from Wild for Taranaki or the Regional Council. And I also want to talk about lizards. I know Chris spoke about lizards this morning. And in the back row there, Lima, do you want to wave your hand? We have one of the country's leading herpetologists working at the Regional Council office and yeah. along with the Taranaki <laughs> Lizard Group, they published a wonderful pamphlet which is also free and available online called Taranaki Lizards. Oh, Helena's even got a copy in her hand. So if you're interested in what lizards are in Taranaki, how to build a lizard garden, um, everything, it's, it's all there. So they've done all the hard work for you, so that resource is available as well. So you can tell people about us, talk about the groups and organisations that are involved, talk about your neighbour who's got a track, talk about your kids who are planting in their school. So the more we can talk about what's going on, the more we can share the word and share the love. So you can donate to support the work being done, there's ways to buy a trap, sponsor a tree, um, you can make a donation to the Taranaki Kiwi Trust or other groups who are working to protect biodiversity. You can volunteer at an event or get involved in the community. And the one I want to quickly touch on this morning is to create or join a restore community. So restore communities are popping up 
all over Taranaki. Some are popping up just on their own and some are popping up in response to actions from the Predator Free 2050 program in the Regional Council and some have been going a long time, such as the Huatoki Conservation Group, which we have Bill Clarkson in the audience today and him and his team have been leading that group for over a decade down in the Huatoki Reserves. So the groups are currently in Oakura, Inglewood, Eltham, Opanaki, Waitara and Huatoki. And they're all at different stages of development. So some have been going a long time, and some are in their infancy, and some are on the road. So this is a picture of a group I'm involved with, which is Restore Kōanga Mō in Inglewood. So we're working in the couple of reserves in Inglewood to restore the biodiversity. And a lot of that is removing pest plants, and there's plenty of that, and Bill can testify to that. <coughs> <laughs> So a restore group community is just a group of people in the community working together to restore their natural environment. So to protect the ecosystems, um, help recover native species and improve the health of water and the land. So each group decides its own focus and activities. So it's very much driven by the wants and needs of your community. So the kind of things they do are set a track, um, remove pest plants, planting, monitoring, see how native species are getting on, and also clean up of rubbish. So what will result? Hopefully more native animals where we live, work and play, increased uh, healthy native habitat, improved freshwater quality, greater awareness and understanding of what our community of how important our environment is, <coughs> and healthy people sharing knowledge and resources, learning new things and working together for a common cause. So who supports Restore Communities? So Wonka Kapanaki have recently employed Esther and she is our Restore Communities Coordinator and her role is to talk with people and listen. So I very much want to um, reiterate what Mari said today. It's all about listening and that's a big part of Esther's job, going around and talking and doing the listening. So she is going to organise community workshops, uh, one in Oakura, one in Waikara and one other in New Plymouth District. And let's help communities develop a plan. So what's important in your community? What values do you have in your community? What can you do about it? And who can help you? Because across Wild and Taranaki, there are over 40 groups and organisations. There's lots of expertise. Some have resources like traps, some have money. So once your community's decided what we really care about, where do we get help? So Esther is also going to help organise community events to stimulate interest. So this kind of really small printed diagram, um, I'd just like to acknowledge Sam Mortensen who's in the crowd here today. Uh, she put this together. So this is the kind of thing that communities can develop. A bit of a strategy or a plan to guide what they want to do going forward. So restore communities are being established and supported in partnership with many Wild for Taranaki members. But I just want to acknowledge the ones on this slide today. They're some of the key players and you've heard from many of them this morning. And thanks to the sponsorship from industry, we can afford to employ um, Esther. So OMV are um, backing us and as is New Plymouth District Council. So we'd just like you to invite you to become part of the movement to restore Taranaki. We absolutely need you. Um, everybody needs to get involved and do something. Um, we have a website, a Facebook page. There's a lovely little video on YouTube if you want to check it out. Um, Myself and Danielle, that's here on the right with the spade. We work in the Wafa Taranaki office, which is based at the Regional Council, and we'd love to hear from you if you've got questions, if you've got ideas, um, if you want to get started. And of course, Esther is around as well. So that's us. And I'm just going to hand off across to Esther just for a couple of minutes, and she's going to brief you on what she's been up to so far. So if there's anyone out there that's um, associated with Wakuda and Waikara specifically, I'd love to know who you are. So if you could touch base with me at some point. So I've already started with um, Opunaki. Um, so my role um, is to bring key players together um, and to communicate so they can work out what they want with restorative environmental actions in their communities. I'm trying to make them visible to each other really. Um, that includes sort of, um, councils, EWE, and any community groups and individuals that have an invested interest. Um, from there, we try to identify priorities um, and form working groups. Um, and from there, having a planned approach rather than a random one. Um, and to pull in experts. So that planned approach um, has some sort of 
evidence-based, um, uh, how would you put it? Make sure that it's culturally and environmentally sensitive. Um, the other thing that's cropped up is maintaining those actions so that they can be ongoing. Um, and then also having a paper trail so that in the future, people know what's gone before. So in a nutshell, um, that is my role. Um, in Ōpanaki, we are predominantly doing it around the loop track, and Ōakura is about to set off in January, and Waitara will follow in February. So, I'm going to leave five minutes for you. Thank you. <laughs> I am the regional advisor for Trees That Count here in Taranaki. So Trees That Count, well I'm basically just going to give you a quick overview as to what Trees That Count is all about and how you can all get involved. So Trees That Count is managed by Project Crimson, an organisation I'm sure a lot of you have heard about. They've been around for close to 30 years and have been really key players in many restoration and education projects around the country. So our main objective at Trees That Count is to create a culture of restoring, planting and protecting native trees. So we want to see Kiwis planting millions more native trees. Um, why native trees? I sort of, I feel like I'm preaching to the converted here, but um, native trees, a lot of our larger native tree species have a longer lifespan than many introduced trees such as pine. Therefore, they absorb more carbon over a longer period of time. Native trees provide habitats for our habitat and food for our native fauna species. And also, native trees, as mentioned in the previous talk, are really spiritually important and can be a source of medicine and food, such as honey. We hope to work really closely with Wild for Taranaki in the region to work on connecting native habitats and to ensuring safe ref refuges for our native fauna species. So Trees That Count was born out of a really simple question, how many native trees are being planted in New Zealand each year? So we're attempting to build a picture of this by measuring the planting efforts by Kiwis around the country. But what we soon discovered was that counting trees wasn't quite enough. People wanted easier access to native trees and this is how our online marketplace was developed. So Trees That Count built New Zealand's first community marketplace which connects funders with planters. So anyone wanting to fund a native tree or a whole lot of native trees can do so through the marketplace and then we match those funded trees up with individuals or community groups who are wanting to plant trees. Uh, so this is basically just a simple diagram as to how it all works. So you've got your tree funders over there and they can be any, anyone from individuals, <laughs> businesses wanting to offset carbon emissions, philanthropists, nurseries. And then in the centre we have the tree pool and that is basically the number of trees that we can then allocate to planters. So planters, again, can be individuals, community groups, schools, iwi groups, councils, and they can easily apply for trees through our Trees Account website. So how can you get involved? So if you've planted a native tree since 2016, whether it's one native tree in your back garden or thousands through a large scale project, we want you to add those trees to the count so you can easily register on the Trees That Count website, treesthatcount.co.nz, and add your trees to the count. If you have a planting project or you're planning a planting project, you can also apply for trees through the website. And depending on how many trees we have in that central tree pool, we can allocate trees to different projects. You can also contribute by funding native trees. So as an individual or a family, you can gift or fund native trees, or as a business, as I mentioned earlier, if you're looking at offsetting carbon emissions, you can fund trees that way as well. So I'm just gonna finish on the slide. Um, we've all got that somebody that we have no idea what to buy them for Christmas. <laughs> so this year, give the gift that grows. Um, on the website, you can purchase a native tree and we send the recipient a gift card and um, 
plant a native tree on their behalf in a community group. Thank you.